Ew, look, she's eating toilet paper. Is she crazy? <laughs> Don't stand near her, she's crazy. She'll bite you too, my new classmates shouted behind my back. This was the 14th school I had changed because of my peculiar habit of eating toilet paper. It started in childhood, and I don't even remember how. My mother did everything she could to cure me, taking me to hospitals, psychologists. But the more they pushed me, the more rolls I consumed. I can't go a day without half a roll. Toilet paper is delicious to me everywhere, especially in public bathrooms. And I'm not joking. Even if some of you say, Ew, how can she do that? Well, I can. I came to a new school where I was introduced to a psychologist for the thousandth time. While she turned away, I managed to put a piece of toilet paper in my mouth, and at that moment, my mother entered the room. She saw me and freaked out, opened my jacket pocket, and pulled out the remaining snack. She pried open my mouth with her hands, and the paper melted on my tongue. My mother cried, and the psychologist tried to calm her down. I then got up from the chair, sighed, and said, People poop everywhere, so I'll find paper everywhere. Just accept it. And I walked out into the yard. Yes, I know about the consequences, a ruptured intestine, hemorrhage, and so on, but I can't stop, or rather, I don't want to. When we arrived home that day, my mother turned the car around and stepped on the gas. She stubbornly ignored my questions about where we were going at such a speed. To be honest, it scared me a lot. Mom, what are you doing? Mom, where are we going? Stop, I'm scared, Mom! The last phrase made me shudder. Some flashes of memories appeared in my head. I was shouting the same phrases, begging my mother to stop, but she never did. Ah! I shouted and instinctively reached for a piece of paper that wasn't in my pocket. Oh no, where's my paper? Mom, give it back to me. I put it where it belongs, in the garbage. At that moment, it became hard for me to breathe. I just wanted a piece, just a small piece. I need that damn paper, Mom! I screamed. She stopped the car then because I wasn't myself. I immediately ran out and went to the nearest cafe. Yep, straight to the bathroom. And you know, there wasn't even any toilet paper in any of the stalls. What is this? Waiter, why is there no toilet paper in the bathroom? And they told me, Yes, miss, we have bidets in our bathrooms. I felt like I'd died and gone to hell. My mother just stood there looking at me. Then she said she wanted to show me a place I would definitely like. I snapped back, saying that the only place I'd like right now is a toilet paper factory. And you didn't seriously bring me to a place like that, did you, Mom? My mother barely smiled, then pointed to a door and invited me to go inside. I happily rushed in and saw my treat being made. A girl in uniform approached us and asked if I wanted a snack. Can you imagine? Of course, I grabbed a roll and bit into it. Oh, how nice it was to eat what I'd been dreaming of for hours. The girl followed me, telling me things while my mother stood off to the side. Suddenly, the lights went out in the room. The conveyor stopped, and I froze in place. Oh, they turned off the lights in here. Mom, I'm here. Can you turn on your flashlight? But my mother didn't react. Hey, Mom, I'm here. But there was silence in return. I quickly pulled out my phone, dropping the paper on the floor, and illuminated the space around me. But there was no mother, no girl, no one. Just me and the paper. Flashes of vaguely familiar moments from my past began to break through my mind again. There I stood, small and barefoot in my pajamas, chasing after my mother, who was quickly moving towards the front door. Mom? Mom, please don't go. Stay. I don't want to eat paper again. Mom! But she didn't even turn around. Mom always worked because she had to raise me alone. Then I slowly turned my head and saw my nanny leaning over me. A few minutes after my mother left, she grabbed me by the hands and led me into the bathroom, closing me in there practically all day. During this time, her friends and boyfriend would come to our house, and I remember my stomach twisting from hunger. To keep from dying, I had to drink water from the tap and eat toilet paper. I had forgotten all of this. I don't remember how, but I'd forgotten it. Yet the habit of eating toilet paper remained. Mom never found out about the story because I closed up and just stayed silent. Everyone else thought I was autistic. Coming back to my senses, I got off the step next to the conveyor belt, started looking for my mom and breathing heavily. Mom! Mom, please, Mom, where are you? Mom, save me from her! 
the nanny's mean. She's bad, Mom. I spoke in a child's voice and all the lights came on. Mom, my new school psychologist, and the girl came out from behind a wall. Mom burst into tears and ran to me, hugging me, and I told her everything I could remember. Yes, it was a trick from the adults to push me and remember all the horror that I tried to forget all these years. But, you know, the psychologist deserves credit. Her scheme worked. I don't need toilet paper anymore. And mom found that nanny and took her to court. It seems like my 14th school just may be the last one. Jill pushed me and I fell right on my butt into the legs of her boyfriend Archie, whom I've had a crush on for at least five years. Why am I such a loser? Why don't I have a boyfriend like Archie or any boyfriend at all? What's wrong with me? What did I do to deserve this? I walked down the street with dirty pants and whined to myself. Suddenly, it started raining. I had to cross the road and while the light was green, I walked, relentlessly wiping the remains of my mascara from my eyes. I'll just grow old and be a lonely old lady someday, I whispered. Hey, who are you calling lonely? I heard someone answer. I turned my head shyly and saw an old lady walking behind me with a bunch of medical bags. Out of embarrassment, I decided to help her carry them. But damn it, I've never carried anything heavier in my life. Not only did I have to carry them a couple of good blocks in my hands, but she also whined the whole way, saying things like, Be careful, there are even eggs in there. What about me? I wanted to ask, but I just walked. After an hour of walking, we arrived at her house, and she thanked me for my free courier work. Do you want a boyfriend? Fame? Popularity? How did you know? Your mascara is running and the word loser is written all over your face. I automatically wiped my face with my hands, but it didn't help. Listen, I'll give you a talisman. Wear it around your neck. It brings good luck, but on one condition. You have to take the DNA of a lucky person, and that luck will serve you. Of course I didn't believe her, but the talisman was cute, in the form of a syringe. So I took it in payment for the bags and left. The next morning at school, I couldn't even open the bathroom stall. The lock was stuck. I had to call for help because class was about to start and I didn't want to be late. Of course, Jill captured the moment on camera when I tried to climb over the top and fell with a crash. She embarrassed me again and spread the video online. The same day, there was a cheerleading tryout. I couldn't even dream of getting in since Jill was the captain. However, I sat on the bench, watching the boys struggle to lift the candidates up the stairs due to their weight, and I suddenly started daydreaming. What if I could do it? I am light after all. Ahead of me sat Stephanie, Jill's friend. She was combing her hair, and then a couple of strands fell onto my lap. Suddenly, I remembered that old lady's words. DNA? What if I eat her hair? That's crazy. Then a ball that the boys were playing with flew towards me. I stood up angrily. They were all laughing at me. So I grabbed her hair and ate it with disgust. Then I went to my audition. Everyone was amazed, and unexpectedly, I made a jump and hop, and they caught me. And then I made some daring moves, and my heart was pounding with joy. I couldn't believe I did it. Jill had to admit I was good and accept me into the team on probation. From that moment on, the other girls began to treat me with more respect. The first rehearsal went great. We all gathered to repeat the dance together, and when I fell, I slipped on a flat surface. Then I stepped on a loose shoelace and realized my luck must have run out. What do I do? I approached Stephanie again, took a hair off her shoulder, ate it, and tried to repeat the jump, but I fell again. What is this? Why did it stop working? Jill announced a break and called me into the bathroom to chat. There she said that if I messed up again, she'd kick me out. Unnoticed, I pulled hair off her head, and I ate it on the way out of the bathroom, and hop, I performed the dance perfectly. So one hair from one lucky person equaled seven hours of luck. That's how I started living. A new life opened up before me. I danced, girls talked to me, they invited me to their parties, and I became popular within a week. Even once, Archie approached me and complimented me. I almost fainted. In chemistry class, I aced the test and even helped Archie through it. After class, he decided to thank me and asked me out. Oh my god, there were rumors that him and Jill had been fighting. This was my chance. Right after school, we decided to go to a cafe. But damn, there wasn't a single beauty in the hallway or on the street. 
I couldn't find a hare to eat and I started to panic. What would I do? If I failed at this date, it would be over for me. I was facing disaster, but then in the bar, I saw Kristen, a local singer. Oh yes, I just had to take one of her hairs and that'll be it. I jumped on her during her performance, grabbing her hair and pulling and eating it. I don't know what happened to me at that moment. I was just out of my mind. Surprisingly, after we separated, she looked at me, silently left her guitar and walked away. And Archie looked into my eyes and said, You take what you want. I like it. Yes, I was on cloud nine. We went outside and he leaned in to kiss me, but something started to feel wrong in my stomach. Strange sensations and... No! I vomited right onto his shirt. Ew! I ran away in tears, all dirty, and headed straight back to that old lady's house. I couldn't make it. It seems I passed out from the pain in my stomach. When I woke up in the hospital, I was told that they'd had to perform surgery. They'd removed a bunch of hair from my stomach. Yuck. My mom was crying in the hallway, and then a nurse walked in. She removed her mask, and it was the old lady in front of me. I wanted to lash out at her for ruining my talisman, but you know what she said to me? Idiot, I was talking about DNA. I meant that if you kiss a handsome guy, luck would come to you. So, you mean the hair I ate didn't have any power? I changed my life without the talisman? Foolish girl, the talisman is just plastic. You're insecure and stupid. I've been working as a nurse for 23 years and I've never seen anyone like you. If you just kissed the guy at least once, you would have realized that you're not a loser. You have to take your fate into your own hands, my girl. So, do you agree with this?